Well, folks, remember the first shield I made for a budget-minded Viking, so plywood, the one that I destroyed recently? Well, as I mentioned, I've made another one, which looks a lot nicer. And this one here is also more historically accurate. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So uh, this one here, as you can tell, is made of planks. The material is pine, and this is one of the materials that Vikings used for their shields back then. Uh, apparently the best they had and would use was linden, and they also used uh, pine, spruce, and fir. At least those are the materials that we have archaeological evidence of. And uh, this one here is made of pine planks. These planks here are seven millimeters thick, and that may surprise you. It is quite thin indeed, but uh, this is one of the thinnest shields that have been found, apparently, so they did use this kind of thickness. And uh, yeah, I kind of had to go with this because it was very difficult to find planks in the right thickness. Most of them were a lot thicker. And that's a common problem that I've seen. A lot of shields that people make that I've seen are just way thicker than it would have been. Special thanks to two local viewers and friends of mine, Miles and Justin, for helping out with this. Miles was nice enough to let me use his tools, and he also did a lot of the work on the shield. And uh, Justin did a lot of uh, side quests, as we call that, driving around quite a bit um, to different stores so we could pick up materials and uh, getting other stuff. So that was very helpful because me living in an apartment here, I just don't have the workspace and I have very limited tools. So uh, that definitely helped. Uh, so the way this was made was gluing those pine planks together. And since they are intended for flooring, they are actually slotted, they fit very well together. So uh, that's not quite accurate, of course. It just makes it a bit easier to connect them. I don't think it makes much of a difference structurally. After the glue had cured, we drew the circle onto the board and then I cut it out. I did not do that with a traditional saw because that would have been a bit more hassle than I was comfortable with. So, uh, not entirely historically accurate, but hey, the end result is the same, right? And uh, after that, I covered it in linen. And linen is apparently ridiculously expensive. I almost had a heart attack when they told me the price for just a little bit of that stuff. Next time I'm probably gonna use canvas again, but hey, linen is more accurate, of course. And uh, I didn't feel quite comfortable with the thin shield. So I put linen both on the front and the back for additional strength. And that makes quite a difference, I noticed. The uh, linen definitely helps giving it more stability, holding the planks together. And also if a blade does cut into it, it prevents splintering and it also makes it easier to fix afterwards, which you'll see. So um, I'm not sure if that was really necessary. I don't know if they did that, if they covered only the, the front or the back as well, but I felt it would might be a good idea to just give it a bit more strength. And uh, the interesting part was at first, this seemed very flimsy. It was quite flexible, but as soon as we put the center grip on, everything straightened out and it became much more solid. So uh, the center grip really adds a lot of strength as you've also seen in the recent shield destruction video. As soon as the, the handle was separated on one side, it got a lot easier to smash it. The grip here is made of purple heart, which of course is a wood that Vikings wouldn't have had access to. It grows in South America, but um, oh well. <laughs> That's what he, what Miles had lying around and it's definitely good wood. It's nice and strong. Uh, I, I'm guessing they would have used oak or some other strong hardwood for the grip, but um, yeah. So the grip was attached by positioning it properly, drilling holes through it, then hammering nails through, cutting the nails off on one side, and then hammering them down, basically peening them uh, to kind of mushroom them out so they hold the grip in place. Then I painted the shield dark green. Uh, at first I thought about painting some kind of nice pattern on it or something, but then I got too lazy. So uh, yeah, flat green it is, but it's a nice green. So I quite like that. And uh, then I just put some wood finish on it. And that 
area i have no idea how they did it how they made it waterproof and if they did if they i mean i don't know if they actually cared about the paint rubbing off or whatever couldn't say but uh, i just did that to make sure it holds up and uh, next step of course was to attach the boss same principle with the nails here hammering them through cutting them off on one side hammering them down this was a bit of a hassle because the the round dome shape starts here right at the corner so that's not very easy to hammer down and i had some rawhide lying around from one of those dog chewing toys and uh, so i soaked that in water put it on the rim and uh, you can use nails to attach it if you want it to be more accurate then you would actually drill holes and um, basically stitch it on so have some kind of string you know ideally some kind of sinew thread and uh, then just go around there and again that was a bit too much work for my taste and uh, i just basically soaked it put it on clamped it and uh, that actually makes it hold on pretty well so you can of course still pull it off but you know with normal use this is really not moving because as the rawhide dries it shrinks and it really holds on to the rim so it's not a problem and uh, then i went on to test it because that's always interesting right so uh, i don't have an actual viking sword the closest i have is the scottish medieval arming sword the albion caithness and um yeah here's how that went So it cut very deep into the wood, uh, deeper than in case of the plywood shield, which um, is not really surprising because plywood does uh, offer a bit more resistance, even though that shield that I previously made was only three layer plywood and two of the layers had a grain going in the same direction. So not that much stronger, but it was also thicker. And you know, for a shield of this thickness, it's actually quite impressive that it can withstand that it didn't split that's very important that's where the linen cover really helps it prevents the wood from splitting and uh yeah it traps the blade which of course is quite an advantage in a fight which is also why i which is also the reason why i think they didn't really put metal rims on there for the most part occasionally you have fines but uh, most of them didn't seem to have any metal on the rim and that makes a lot of sense because you want your opponent's blade to be stuck in your shield so you can control it and counterattack. so um, that's probably desirable and since i plan to use this shield in martial arts practice i wanted to repair that damage and the way i went about it was to first rub some wood glue it's just regular carpenter's glue by the way into the cut so uh, to, to fill that gap and then I took linen and placed it on top of it on both sides and uh, let that cure and then afterwards I just painted it over and but that adds quite a bit of strength to it. So as soon as the glue dried it was impossible to, to move the two ends. So I think even if a blade hit the same spot again, it wouldn't necessarily go much further than before. And then I decided I wanted to reinforce the rim some more for regular practice. And one of my viewers sent me this leather here. It's just uh, the sleeves from a jacket that he cut off or a customization project that he didn't get around to or whatever, I don't quite remember. But um, this came in very handy. So I simply glued that onto the rim and I just brushed some glue onto one side, clamped it on and uh, yeah, this holds. Doesn't even need any nails. Um, you could use nails if you wanted to, but uh, I wanted to avoid that because then you have to either cut them off and uh, flatten them out, which that's a lot of work, or you would have to bend them over and then you can have scratchy bits poking out so to speak and then you would have to grind that down and yeah really didn't, didn't feel like it but uh just putting wood glue on there clamping it down that works perfectly really no need to do any more than that so yeah i'm pretty happy with it as it is right now well, the inside is not quite that clean looking because there's some some stains from the glue but hey i'm not really concerned with that because i could scrub it some more if i wanted to but hey who cares right and uh, yeah, that is a mostly authentic Viking round shield. 
you know, not quite perfect. I didn't use like bone glue or whatever and milk paint and all of that. But, uh, you know, the basics are definitely pretty authentic. So, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. And finally, just a quick demonstration of how they might have been used. Um, in role-playing games, you often see them used pretty much as if they were strapped shields. You know, just held like this in front of the body and then fighting from behind that. But um, it really makes a lot more sense to hold them like this because that way you can shoot in and uh, block your opponent's arm. But more importantly, when meeting an attack, instead of just blocking it statically, you can let it rotate in your hand and bring it over to the other side so that most of the force, or actually all of the force, is redirected. And so you don't have to catch it on your arm. 